four remaining to be played in the championship game. The Tar Heels are trying to win it a second straight. Five seconds left. Avery in the air. Shot won't go down. Avery gets it back up. Three, two, one. No good, but it doesn't matter. The game is over. Here Warriors stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, face to face, ready to compete at the highest level, to push one another toward excellence, to win with pride fight with honor, and lose with dignity. This is the Atlantic Coast Conference, and this is its tournament. Nine teams, one thoroughly tested deserving champion. Make no mistake, this is a battle royal. Palms sweat, hearts pound, and the pressure builds. Emotion runs high, and tradition runs deep. The entire sports world is watching. Over 700 sports media attend. A national television audience. This is crunch time, the moment of truth. Where courage collides with opportunity and the will to win forces young men to dig deep for that elusive ability to perform graceful heroics under intense pressure. It is for those magical moments which ignite our souls and charge our hearts that we play. They are the essence of this tournament. This is for the possibilities and the impossibilities, because anything can happen. This is the ACC, a raised fist in victory and a heartfelt handshake in defeat. Win or lose, it's a once in a lifetime experience, a moment in history a lifetime of memories. And it's the comforting feeling that next year, we'll do it all over again. Yes, it's a game, but what a game it is. <laughs> the woo birds cometh. Their sound is not the first rite of spring, it's a universal battle cry. And for everyone who lives in this part of the world, it's a clear signal that it's ACC tournament time. From Tobacco Road to the national spotlight, let the air be filled with song. <laughs> Father to son, mother to daughter, this rich tradition is past. From Maryland to Florida they come, their team colors proudly displayed. These bloodlines run thick and sometimes require a delicate balance to keep the peace. I am giving points. Don't I'm come, taking Jack Carolina. Carolina. You're coming home. Yeah, I'm giving Carol I'm taking Carolina and giving six. Carolyn, he's giving still taking out Duke and giving eight. I love my wife. <laughs> you wanna say hi to anybody else? This is my wife. That's the main thing. <laughs> they are young and old. They are loud and bold. You'll find them in the stands. You'll find them in the band. They are official fanatics, these mighty woo birds. And they've descended on Greensboro to fight for their right to brag, their right to nag, and their opportunity to shout, woo-wee, baby, woo-wee. Nine teams all prepared to fight their way into Sunday, and a fight it would be. Nationally ranked teams, including number one ranked Duke, and the nation's fourth ranked team, North Carolina. There were six All-Americas, including National Player of the Year, Anton Jameson. There was also Vince Carter and Shaman Williams. The Wolfpack, C.C. Harrison, Tex Matt Harpring, and Duke's Wojo, representing so many seniors who would play in their last ACC tournament. While most of the coaches were well-seasoned in the tournament wars, there were two new faces at the end of the bench. FSU coach Steve Robinson would waste no time getting a taste of the tournament. His Knowles would play in the first game. Bill Guthridge would guide the Tar Heels through his first ACC tournament as head coach. One other familiar face in a new role was former UNC Athletic Director John Swafford. He would enjoy his first tournament 
as the newly appointed Atlantic Coast Conference Commissioner. Yes, there was plenty to shout about. And as the sun set on Thursday and darkness washed away a Carolina blue sky, the stage was ready and the hype was all gone. The time had come to lace up the shoes and get it on. Game one matched the Wolfpack of NC State and the Seminoles of Florida State. Though many miles lay between Raleigh and Tallahassee, these teams found themselves to be very closely matched. And while the Knolls came out swinging the chop, they soon found it would take a little more to knock the pack on its back. Put the ball in the basket and have one and enjoy it. Good luck. Clemens pass knocked away. Stolen by in showtime. Here it goes. Holy Toledo, that was a windmill stop. As the first half wore on and the team settled down, the pack grabbed the first bite and gnawed away at the Knolls, building an early advantage and battling their way to a 30 to 25 halftime lead. A lead which left Florida State coach Steve Robinson scratching his head and the pack Sendek sheepishly smiling his way to the break. Slide to Harrison, in low it goes to Kelly. Shot rejected by Chavez, and he comes chasing it down on the corner. But a block shot and a three-pointer to tie quickly wiped the smile from Sendak's face. The Seminoles' surge to start the second half signaled the fight was on. Their 16-3 run left them standing tall on a 41-33 lead. Fights for the rebound, puts it up and lays it in. Greer's for the story of the second half. Lamar Greer is doing it. With the Knowles turning up the heat and State's go-to guys struggling, Coach Sendek looked elsewhere for help. And with their tournament lives hanging in the balance, Wolfpack prayers were answered in the form of senior guard Oshawa Benjamin. Right side, three-pointer lots. Benjamin got it to go. Holy Toledo. Benjamin scored seven straight points, played amazing defense and finally ignited C.C. Harrison for a devastating 18-0 run. But Lamar Greer and the Seminoles refused to surrender. And a couple of three-pointers and a few missed free throws later, Florida State had one final chance to tie or win. With everything on the line and timeout on the floor, Herb Sendak turned to Tim Wells, who hadn't seen any game action to this point. And in the end, it wasn't science which blinded the Knowles, but the vision of Sendek and the outstretched arm of the now famous six second man. The game was over, the pack advanced, and we were all reminded that six seconds can bring a lifetime of joy. However, Sendek's wolf pack knew that the win could only be savored that night. The victory moved them from the battle to the war, a date with number two seed, North Carolina. Remember, this is the ACC Tournament. Every game isn't close, and every ending isn't magical, as Coach Jeff Jones and Virginia were about to discover in the night's second game. The Blue Devils came into Greensboro 27 and two, and ranked number one in the nation and they jumped all over the Who's early. Watch this. Strong moves inside. Oh. That is just pure power. Here's the Andrew. Oh. shot is blocked. Battier batted it away. For three. Yes. And that's Avery three in a row. But Virginia is a proud contestant. And though they were knocked back, they were certainly not out. Staples are three. Over the next 15 minutes, the Cavs would stand and fight, exhorted by the fiery Jones and the coaching staff's simple wisdom. Hey, man, it's not, that hard. not hard, maybe. Inevitable, definitely. 
Kay would control his team, and his team would control the second half. And though the contest would go on, anyone could see that on this day, the Blue Devils were simply too much for Virginia to handle. The joust was no longer in jest, as Duke suddenly went for the heart. This is an 8-0 run out of the locker room by Duke. Avery McLeod, jumper, 17, bottom. McLeod got a good look up top, and Duke starts to slip away from Virginia. First Avery, then Burgess, and Battier. All followed by Langdon and led by Wojo. The Devils poured it on and quickly ended any Virginia dream for an upset. And this kept Coach K calm as he watched his Blue Devils earn a bye into Saturday's semis. Day two, the tournament is in full swing with three big games, even larger crowds, and growing national media attention. The pressure intensifies to say the least. Game one pits the Maryland Terrapins against the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. The Terps feature big man Obina Akizi and Laron Prophet. Bobby Kremen's Jackets NCAA bid hangs in the balance, and he will look to senior All-ACC All-America Matt Harpring and freshman Dion Glover. These are tough coaches with tough defensive teams, but today there would be no answer for the big man down low and Akizi would take it easy and score. First inside, then out. And Harping taking Stokes in a mismatch. Akizi again, soft one-hander, got another one. Maryland was simply knocking their socks off and cruised to a 43 to 33 halftime lead, leaving doubt in even the biggest Yellow Jacket fan. While Buzz was looking for a way to get in, Bobby Kremens was looking for a way out out from under the Maryland pressure, both offensive and defensive. We have bust that, Rodney. Oh, Rodney, get Get up! Get up! If the Jackets were to have any chance, the second half must belong to senior Matt Harpring. How did they get Harpring started? I think that's really the key for Bobby Grimms. Knocked out to Maddox. Back to Harpring. He's working at scoring, and he wants that ball down inside. Good move by Bobby Grimms to make his team get Harpring off the ground. Though Matt fought with a champion's heart. Harpring. Three-pointer over Profit. Good. Now Harpring starting to find the groove. Back to Harpring. He'll slash in the lane. 12-footer away and good. 61-53. Even his heroics couldn't stop Maryland's onslaught, which ended with five players in double figures. It was a balanced and deadly attack. And as the second half moved on, the end came quickly. This game, however, would have still more to offer. Standing ovation by the entire Coliseum for Matt Harper. A fond farewell and a sportsman's thank you. Unbelievable. You know, I played in this league, and uh, that's one of the nicest things I've ever seen. They didn't do that for me, and I played this way. Game two brought together the NC State Wolfpack and the tournament two seed North Carolina Tar Heels. Rivalry is defined by meetings like this. See how many rebounds? Oh, how many you got, Hawk? Oh, how many you got? How many rebounds? Two teams with storied backgrounds rich traditions, and long-standing success. Theirs have been classic duels. The legend of Tobacco Road is full of plays and players from these neighboring schools. So what better way to get things started than with this year's best? Dakota moving right side, bounce pass down low to Jamison, turning, shooting, storm. Jamison 
Basketball Times National Player of the Year makes it 2 nothing in the first three and a half minutes. Jamison's bucket opened a low-scoring half that was filled with gritty, if not pretty, basketball. Come on! Come on! Come on! This was the Heels' first appearance in this year's tournament, and a little rush showed. The pack was back in the pressure-filled arena less than 24 hours after an emotional win, and that showed as well. It was by all accounts a sloppy first half. Sloppy, but exciting. Stolen by Coda, two on one break. Coda goes down, dropped it back to Jamison from the slam dunk behind his back. Look for that on your highlights tonight. C.C. Harrison awoke from the sloppy spell in the second half with consecutive three-pointers. Hinge coming out of the left corner into lane, faking, feeds Harrison, pumps a three, good! C.C. Harrison is warming up! Then the heels turn what might have been a classic backyard brawl into a picnic on the pack. In the 18 minutes which ensued, Carolina, as the saying goes, simply ate the pack's lunch. The heels kept running, and State began to wilt. Carolina scored on five straight breakouts as the pack went 0 for 10. Anton Jamison led all scores and delivered the knockout punch with 16 second half points as the heels pulled away, with Bill Guthridge stoically reflecting on his first tournament victory as head coach any special meaning to winning your first tournament game? Not really, I'm just happy that we won. I was looking around for Dean there earlier, but, uh, but he wasn't around. You certainly, certainly have to credit North Carolina's defense. It just wasn't our night for the ball to be dropping. The state fate did not await the Demon Deacon shooting in the day's final game, at least not early on. Everything they sent up dropped in. And drop after drop, ACC tourney newcomer Robert O'Kelly and senior Tony Rutland began to rain three-pointers and pour in buckets from everywhere. Robert O'Kelly, three for three from behind the arc. Rutland, that's beyond the arc, that's the three more. O'Kelly, yes, and he's fouled. Oh, my, do you believe this? Rick Barnes' Tigers withstood the Deeks' opening surge and weathered the storm with a rainbow or two of their own. That's for two. And when Terrell McIntyre buried a three to end the half, the Tigers were within eight. Down to five, McIntyre shoots the three and hits it. Wow. What a half of basketball. In the second half, the Tigers shut down O'Kelly by rotating several defenders at him. Then with the head in trouble, Clemson went for the body and pounded the ball inside. Inside ball, whipped to Butcher, shot up good, foul call. When McIntyre launched another three, Odom could sense the beginning of the end. McIntyre gonna loft a long three, tries to tie it and does. Terrell McIntyre, Wake's lead of 10 has evaporated enough. Over the next five minutes, Wake couldn't buy a basket and couldn't find an answer for their increasingly distressed leader. What are we doing? Christie banks it in. 60-54 Tigers. Out How about that? Back and tired of Christie. The Tigers ran off with the second half and stole away into the Greensboro night to prepare for their duel with the Devils on the morrow.
Saturday morning, semi-finals day. And that can only mean one thing. It's time to dance. Dance the dance. The coaches dance. It isn't easy coaching in this league. It's pressure-filled, highly emotional, genuinely unsettling work. Though the dancing seems to help. Tug of War first half in Saturday's first semifinals saw the Maryland Terrapins build a seven point lead over North Carolina. Here's Laurent popping for three, and it popped out. Yes, it can, it just follows up as Carolina stood flat footed. Maryland ball, and running. Elliott to Stokes, back to Elliott. Out of the game. Then Mokhtar MJ fouled out early in the second half, and it looked like a turning point in the game. And it was, as freshman Brendan Haywood would be asked to step up. Trying to get front court now against Stokes. Gets to Brendan Haywood. Oh! Oh, on the drive and the slam dunk. Oh, and he comes out of there yelling and running back up the floor to get on defense. Brendan Haywood, whose mom is here watching him play in his hometown of Greensboro. Instead, he jumped up and ignited the Tar Heels and indeed turned the entire contest into a mad scramble for the finish. Williams dribbling by Morris, right side. Williams gets it to Jamison. Carolina lead. 16 of 59 as he backed it off the glass. Akizi, jump shot, 15, good. Maryland back in front, 61 to 60. Go to the top of the foul circle, driving in the lane. A runner from 10 feet, got it. Now down low to Akizi. Turning on Haywood, shooting, scoring. And you just got to score every possession here in these last few minutes, or you're, you're not going to win the game. Back and forth they went two evenly matched opponents fighting for their tournament lives. This was as close as it gets to smash mouth basketball. And as dynamic duels should end, it all came down to one final play with time running out. In this situation, Carolina likes Coda driving. Shimon Williams outside the arc, spotting up for a possible three. It up to Shamond Williams, faking, got fouled on the play, a three-point play, Proppet has fouled out. As Maryland's Proppet tried to gather his thoughts, Coach Gary Williams spoke kind words of wisdom. It's a hustle play. He wasn't uh, dogging it or anything like that. He just tried to make a great play, go up as high as he could, and, and Williams did a good job of getting him up in the air. Just as you don't fall a wily coach for crying, which is just what Williams did following Shamond's second free throw. We called timeout to freeze the shooter, then the timeout just got extended. Then he made a substitution, removed the substitution, stirred it all up, and created big confusion. How much did you contribute to all that confusion? Oh, I was just trying to get the game started as quickly as possible, you know. They... <laughs> when the commotion settled down, all eyes turned to Williams. And the heels came up empty. Williams working right side. We'll come back to the middle now. Dakota penetrating to Okalaja. He's open for a three. Got it. 71 to 66. Okalaja with his second three of the game. The heels quickly opened a five point lead in overtime then turned it over to Shimon to finally finish what he started at the end of regulation, eliminating the Terps 
and leading Carolina back to the hill to rest before tomorrow's struggle for the top spot. Right on the heels of the Carolina victory, the second semifinal between Duke and Clemson provided similar sights, similar sounds, and similar endings, as this game, too, would come down to one final play. McIntyre dumps it out of the corner. Miller wide open. It flies out on him, and he hits the three. And now the Tigers regain the lead at 49 to 48. Lojo all the way down inside, puts it up. Oh! This was one tough defensive struggle. The Tigers held a five-point halftime lead, only to watch Duke's freshman, Shane Battier, and Elton Brand score seven straight points to regain the lead. And from there, it would go back and forth the rest of the way. Under the glass, it's a man's game. And these young men were banging bodies all afternoon long. But in the end, the wide bodies turned it over to the shooters, who lit up the sky as the crowd went wild. Comes up, puts a body on him, Lang the season opening, darts inside, out in the left corner, Wojo, three, yes! Oh, what a shot. Steve Wojciechowski knocks home the three, and it's 62 to 58. McIntyre for the three, the right side, he knocks it home as well. What a shot. Woo! And it's a one-point game again, it's 62-61, and Clemson wants it. The timeout. Rashawn flashes out, comes up top, catches, turns, shoots, missed the shot. Tap, no good. Oh, oh. and Brand. Oh, Brand taps it in over everybody to give Duke a three point lead at 64 61. 13 seconds left. Miller waits for the time to go by. McIntyre for three. It is all oh. driven in the hole. Good. McIntyre ties it at 64 with seven seconds left. With the game on the line, Coach K called the play and his Devils took the floor. Clemson needs to play good defense. They also have to block out. How many times in this situation have you seen it? Not the final shot that makes it, but the tip in that decides the game. 7.8 seconds, still a lot of time for Duke to get a shot off. Avery jetting up the left side. Five seconds left, leaving in the air. Shot won't go down. Avery gets it back up. shot it I knew it wasn't going in so I had a sense of urgency you know to get back to the ball and I was able to gather it and I'll put it back in. I'm, I'm glad he had a sense of urgency. Hey, it was a great college basketball game you, you hate to see games in like that on, a, on plays like that and, and, and I truly expected it to come down to the last possession of the game and that's what I told our team and but I told them we'd win it. These fans had ridden on an emotional roller coaster experiencing the highs and lows of great basketball. And in the process, watch two of the best college games of the season. Even Coach K was not exempt from the excitement of the day. It's a long afternoon, wasn't it? Two pretty good games. I told our kids that this afternoon, because we have so many young guys, that this afternoon is going to be like a final. This is a final four of the ACC. And having these four teams playing, that they're going to be two great games and to soak it up because you're not going to have a chance to be in this environment uh, very often. This is a, uh, a great day for ACC. Championship Sunday brought them out of the woodwork, and everyone had their own game plan. Me too. We're shameless today. You, you, you <laughs> children. <laughs> the crowd poured into the Greensboro Coliseum, where things really began to get cooking. Our 
Army has Navy. Bill Clinton has Kenneth Starr. And Carolina has Duke. There is no love lost among these two. And there never will be. When it comes to big games, what could be finer than Duke and Carolina? The scene, the Greensboro Coliseum, can the capacity as the top two seeds go head to head in the championship game of this tournament for the 19th time. Now it's going to Duke and Carolina had met in this very championship seven times before. The Heels taking five victories, Duke two. The defense thus far forcing North Carolina outside, but there's an inside basket. Yeah. Great back door. McLeod for three. Took Duke a couple of minutes to get going offensively, but now they found some rhythm. Jameson, up and oh in. Oh, my. Antoine's first bucket of the day. Jameson, banks at home. <laughs> okay. Jameson, what a move. <laughs> and Okalaja with a steal. Over to Coda. Carolina running three on two. Coda the pull-up. Just like that, Carolina goes in front. Carolina playing the enemy. And Carowell with his second three. Williams. Fourth three and the lead. The first half ended with Duke missing on seven straight trips down the floor as the Tar Heels scored on the same seven. The Heels had seized control of the floor. So with the half coming to an end, the Devils turned to the air as Trajan Langdon let fly. Four, three, Langdon. Go! That's a huge basket to end the half by. Big, big basket for Duke. At the onset of the second half, Duke mounted its last charge. Langdon hit a three. Then Elton Brand tied the game with a pair of free throws. Vince Carter countered for the heels with a pair of his own. Basketball is a game which runs this way and that. As the second half wore on, it went this way if you were a Tar Heel, and that way if you weren't. As the game wore on, I, you know, we didn't have the energy. They're a very physical team, and uh, it seemed like we were short on everything today. Duke went stone cold, and Carolina warmed up the bus, running out to a comfortable lead which was never seriously challenged. The Tar Heel faithful rose to their feet, having earned their spot at the top of the hill, having won this emotionally draining three-day brawl for it all. It was time to celebrate. As tournament MVP Anton Jameson and the Tar Heels slammed the door on their second straight ACC championship and sent the Devils back to Durham. The 1998 Atlantic Coast Conference We were naturally thrilled with, uh, with this victory. Uh, I, I was so proud of our team. They really played, uh, played their hearts out. It was just a, a great win. And when it was truly over, the fat lady didn't sing. The point guard directed the band. Former All-State French hornist, Shaman Williams orchestrated his own championship theme as he and his fellow Tar Heels played their way into the annals of the Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. It was a great year for the Tar Heels. Next time, who will it be when the Woo Birds call stirs us next spring? For we will gather again, ACC friends and foes, to relive the highs and those dreaded tourney lows. We will gather again, slightly wiser with age to watch these kids grow into men on college basketball's grandest stage. This is the Atlantic Coast Conference, and this was the tournament 1998.